previously on Common Sense Medicine. Okay, cholesterol is this four ring structure. You know, it's, it's the one thing that's in eggs. It's also the a common thing that's in, uh, when we talk about heart attacks, people are like, oh, you have a high cholesterol, you have to worry about a heart attack. It's also part of the whole steroid thing. I'm not I'm talking about steroids. I'm sorry, we're talking about cholesterol today, but we've talked about cholesterol before. It's a big subject. In the link below, you'll see Cholesterol 101. Click on that link, and that'll help give you enough review pop back to this video, it should make a lot more sense. So are you all caught up? Great, let's move on. Time for a history lesson. Back in the 50s, they linked cholesterol to heart disease. They said people who had high cholesterol have high levels of heart disease. They found cholesterol buildups in the arteries of the heart. And they said, this is why people get blockages. Well, at that time, people were eating bacon and cooking in lard and tons of you know, butter. And they said, this is the problem. So if we cut these things out, then we'll be better off. Here's the thing. In our bodies, the main problem with heart disease is these things called the coronary arteries. Now, what they do is they siphon off a little bit of blood and oxygen to go feed the heart muscle, which is like any muscle in our body that needs oxygen, sugar, nutrients, all different things. So as it's pumping, there's all this blood going back into the heart to feed it. The coronary arteries can get clogged. Now, that problem has been attributed to cholesterol. It's not really the sole reason. So if you have an artery, okay, it's a big tube, all right? And in that artery, if something's traveling through there and there's a free radical or something that, that damages the inside part of that tube, the body's gonna just try and fix it so it then tries to do a repair. Let's just say there's a wound, like a cut, and it gets healed and it forms a scab. And inside though, the body starts doing some changes in there. There's something called a fatty streak that forms in there and that attracts some cholesterol and then eventually chronic inflammation and then calcium buildup. So now we have this tube and we've got calcium buildup. Now, this is not a problem because the body, you know, you, I don't sit there and have a big bump on my arm from having cut it like, you know, 10 years ago. But if I keep hitting it and keep hitting it and keep hitting it and keep hitting it in the same spot, eventually I'll form a scar here. In the arteries, they protect themselves by inflammation and healing, inflammation and healing, but eventually if there's chronic inflammation in the body, eventually the body will lay calcium down because it's like there's just too much, there's too much damage on that artery and I'm gonna protect it better if I just lay calcium on the inside. So each time we do it, there's more and more accumulation of material. So now we have this tube that was like this. It, what happens is eventually there's a part of the tube that starts to actually not be a tube, it actually starts forming a blockage. And from both sides it'll start forming and eventually we don't have circulation going through to the coronary arteries again. When we get stressed, then our arteries like to constrict. That's a natural process. Normally it should be this much, now it's this much, and now you constrict your arteries, guess what happens? You have a heart attack. The muscles of the heart are actually causing pain and damage because they're ischemic or means they don't have enough oxygen and they're dying. I'm just having a moment for the dying heart cells. I'm done now. When they saw this they thought, oh it's cholesterol's the problem. But cholesterol is part of the changes that happen in the repair process, but cholesterol is not the reason for it. Do you know that a third of the people that die of heart heart attacks have cholesterols in the normal range. Bam. The take home message here is that to know that your heart is running well or not running well. High blood pressure is still a good indicator of, of uh, the damage that could happen to the heart. We also have obesity. If you're obese, there's a good chance your heart's having to work that much harder. But I just wanted to give you this information to let you know and um, show you how to use the information well.